They're not, uh, they're not the big fat one. This would be much more typical of French cooking. And we'll soak those overnight in ample water and then in a kettle, prepare with the beans. These have, these have been soaked for a time, you see. Prepare with the beans um, a couple of yellow onions and we're gonna stick the yellow onions. Where are my yellow onions? I have to peel one for you, I think. I don't even have one out here. Well, those are the breaks. Here's one, here's one. We'll peel a, a yellow onion and put two cloves in it. That's a classic old trick old French trick for taking the gamey flavor out of foods. Did you know that? Did you notice how I did this? Cut the, the bottom end of the onion off first, the root end, and you're much less likely to cry. Dion Lucas taught me that. Long time ago, through a book, never did even meet the old girl. She was wonderful. She was the one who started all of us cooking and television. Did you know that? She was the first one in New York City, long before any of us were doing this sort of thing. Dion Lucas. So some night, have a glass of wine when you're enjoying a good dish that you learned from some television cook and, and toast to Dion Lucas. Bless her heart. All right. One whole onion, and into that I'm going to place a, a couple of cloves and just stick them right in the side of the onion. And that will go in the pot of beans, which you've soaked overnight. Here's one clove. We'll put in another one. We don't need the skin. All right. That will go into our, our beans. And in addition to that, well, we'll need, um, uh, let's see, we'll need some carrots. We'll put in a couple, oh, about four carrots into our pot and uh, some garlic, and then we're going to cover that with broth. Just barely bring it to a cover, you see. I have one already for you. And let that simmer for about an hour so that the beans are just barely tender. We don't want them mushy. You don't want mushy. You can't make a good cassoulet with mushy beans. Yuck. It won't work at all. So here's our, here's our uh, product ready to go in the casserole. We have the beans. Let me just get my hands in here and show you what's here. The beans and the uh, carrot, there's garlic in here, and the good broth that we've made from the wings and the neck. And finally, here's the old onion, you see? With the two cloves, this flavored the pot well. Now we'll tuck that into the casserole, the casserole, which in this case is a brief cassoulet, along with the sauce and the broth, the whole works. There we are. And then we're going to prepare now we'll, let, we'll get ready to put this in the oven. I'm not going to do this on top of the stove. I want to put it in the oven. And I have a cup of, um, of uh, puree that I've stirred into some more onions. I know, you, you're going to say, my Lord, is he putting in more and more onions? We're going to put in more onions. The puree, tomato puree, boy, it's about as far as I can get it. Right? Get away from it. Yeah, got it. Would be stirred into our onions. I have three onions here that I've sauteed with more garlic. Can you believe this? There's garlic all over the place. And we would saute the onions and the garlic, and then at the last, add the beautiful tomato puree. And that goes into our casserole. Our cassoulet casserole. How's that for confusion, huh? Oh, you can toss that about a bit if you'd like. And finally, we're going to put in a Polish sausage. Unfortunately, uh, I'm not going to have room to get all of this stuff in here, but uh, we'll come very close. There we are. One Polish sauce. It's about a pound, huh? About a pound, right into the pot. Okay. Ugh. There, just push him down in. And we'll seal the top up. <laughs> what if this thing explodes? What are we going to do? Beans all over the place. Well, I can think of worse uh, deaths, can't you? We'll seal the top up with wax paper. This will cook down. Don't, don't worry about it. This will cook down. And put a heavy lid on it. And it goes in a 350 degree oven. Oh, for a couple of hours and everything will be ready because you've pre-cooked the pork, you've pre-cooked the uh, duck, the sausage you don't have to worry about. Those are the three meats. The beans have been simmered until they're barely, barely tender with a bit of broth, uh, uh, four carrots, a little bit of garlic, and the onions stuck with two cloves, all right? Then you saute three or four more onions along with some more garlic, a little tomato puree, and that is the final layer that goes over our casserole, which is a cassoulet, which is yummy. I'll show you one. If I can get it out of the oven, this one may have exploded. We'll see what happens. This weighs a ton, oh, or something very close to that. But it will feed a lot of people. And uh, the beans, uh, the beans are not actually just a stretcher. The beans have a marvelous flavor uh, in and of themselves. So it's all right to feed beans. Don't think of casseroles as cheap things any more than you should think of pasta as cheap things. That's not the point. The point is that it's easy for you to prepare for a lot of people. Oh boy. Ouch, whoops, I forgot something here. Let me, uh, let me get a hot pad so that we don't burn up everything. Now I'm ready. 
All right. We've got to have a crane installed in my kitchen. I, this stuff is really heavy, but it's wonderful. You ready? There. Now get rid of the wax paper. Well, try and get rid of the wax paper. There it goes. Look at the duck sticking his little head out of the... I shouldn't talk like that. If you're a little child, don't worry about the duck. He's enjoying himself. It's a wonderful place to be. You should have such a happy, uh, a happy existence, huh? That's it for the, the uh, duck, sausage, Polish sausage, and the pork uh, casserole. That would be served, um, oh, I suppose, with a nice green salad. You're not going to need much more. And a nice glass of wine. Uh, you've got a winner every time. Thirdly, let me show you one more here. This one is from the Philippines, and it's called adobo. A-D-O-B-O, -O, adobo. Very quickly to, uh, prepared. It's, it's just delicious. What pot does that one go in? Let me see. Oh, I remember. It's the oval one. Um, well, it's great. I don't have one on the set. <coughs> I'll prepare one in this bowl because it's supposed to go in this one. I can't find mine, so it doesn't matter. Let me show you how to put one together because I have all the parts here, and I have one cooking on the stove right now. Adobo. It is a strange mixture because we're going to use chicken and pork together. And most Americans go, hmm, that shouldn't, shouldn't blend and match, but it will. You watch. All right, we're going to have one chicken, which we've cut up and pan-fried. You see him? He's all, the pieces are cut up, and not into bite-sized pieces, but what I would call serving pieces. You see? There we are. Okay, he goes into the casserole. I know this looks like a bowl. Pretend it's a casserole, for heaven's sakes. All right, secondly, we're going to add some, uh, about two pounds of pork, which has been pre-browned in a pan. That's a little more. I think it's a little more than two pounds. We'll just put in two pounds worth. That's enough. Two pounds of pork. Uh, I'm using pork shoulder or pork butt or pork loin. Pork butt is the fattest of the three. Uh, and this is obviously pork butt. It isn't pork shoulder at all. You see how fat it is? You may want to cut down on that by buying a more expensive uh, piece of... Uh, of pork. It depends on who's coming to the party, I suppose. <laughs> All right. Now, we're going to add one entire cup of red wine vinegar. Not red wine, but red wine vinegar. You got that? It's to be, it's to be um, vinegary in flavor eventually. Okay, so we'll get a cup of red wine vinegar in on this. And then we're going to add a half a cup of soy, of soy sauce. Oh, I know that it sounds strange to be putting vinegar in meats, but uh, it, it's turning, it turns out beautifully. And a half a cup of soy. And then we're going to add a couple of bay leaves. Good old bay again. Interesting blend of flavors, isn't it? Oh, these are the same little stinky bay leaves. Let's use four. You use a, a couple of large ones or a couple of little ones. Uh, uh, four little ones, please. And some pepper. And some salt. And we've got it. Where is my salt? Here it is. And you, you will cover this now with a... Well, you won't cover Just add to it a cup of stock. A cup of of uh, chicken stock. That's about a cup of stock right there. And then we will put that in the pan and uh, simmer it for about an hour or so. And at the end of the hour, when the flavors begin to blend and the uh, vinegar mellows out, did you get the recipe? I have chicken and pork. I've pan fried both of these first. And then I've added to the pan a cup of red wine, a little bit of soy. You can see it blending already down here. And then we've added a couple of bay leaves and some pepper and salt, a cup of chicken stock. So this will have enough to moisture to uh, simmer for a bit. We're going to put it in a casserole, put it right on the top of the stove, and after an hour of gentle simmering, let me show you what we'll get here. Let's see what's ready. I hope this one's ready. Um, wooden spatula. Do you know how hard it is to work with someone who says, I'm going to take the lid off the pot, and then he walks away to the... You know? But we have a lot of fun here. You ready? There it is. This is just beautiful. See how tender everything is? Oh, it's gorgeous. Now, there's one last ingredient, and you'll probably have trouble finding coconut milk. But I want you to find, uh, find it if you can. Otherwise, here's the way you make your own. You put a cup, uh, we need a cup of coconut milk for this dish now to finish it. So here's the way you make your own. You put a cup of, uh, of uh, milk into your food blender. Don't try this in a food processor. It'll just go all over the walls of the place. And whir it with three-fourths of a cup of coconut. And there we are. That's all it takes. I know if you're Filipino, you're going to say, no, that really won't work. But it's as close as we can come in a community where you can't get coconut milk. So at the last of the, the uh, just before your guests are ready to sit down, then you add the coconut milk. And you want to add a cup to this dish. 
That's a little bit more because, of course, the coconut takes up space, too. And we'll stir this in. Oh, this is just, it's just too much. I'm not sure which I'll start. Oh, yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm sure. Uh, I'll start in on the, uh, the eggplant uh, Italian sausage uh, uh, casserole with the lamb because I really am a lamb fan from way back, and it, it's, it's so rich, and it's so mellow. Now, if you tell me that you don't like lamb because lamb tastes gamey, uh, calm down until you've tried it cooked this way. In our culture, we generally roast lamb uh, until it's uh, just unbelievably strong and old, but this one is mellow and sweet and delicious. It has that mutton flavor you see that you don't want. This, it doesn't appear in a dish like this. It'll be wonderful for you. Let's put that on our, on our buffet. No, I don't want you to serve all three of these. I want you to realize that the idea behind the casserole is that uh, dishes can be prepared ahead of time and served very conveniently. And you don't have to do much more than, after the work is done, of course, do much more than, uh, than simply bring them out and set them on the buffet and smile at your guests and then sit down and reap your just rewards. What are those rewards? Well, it seems to me that if you've thought carefully about your guests and if you've prepared a buffet of, uh, of beautiful cassoulets and then of course throw out a nice salad and uh, some nice bread and perhaps uh, a bit of wine you've pretty much prepared a whole meal it's very exciting and it's a great compliment to your guests and in the end in the end the compliment that comes to you is well worth the effort none of these dishes are terribly expensive uh, but they're all involved in terms of time. But if you'll take the time, the reward that comes back will be a kiss at the end of the evening or a chuckle or the wise inclination that you will have when you climb into bed to think about what people are saying when they go home from your party. You know how you talk. Well, they talk too. And as they go home from your party, uh, they'll turn to one another and they'll say, uh, Harold, I had no idea that he was that fond of us. That was a wonderful evening. That's the point of entertaining. We don't want to just stuff each other with cheap hors d'oeuvres. We want to celebrate the fact that we really need each other and that we're dependent upon one another. Without, without your friendship, uh, I'm not a whole person. That's what the table's for. And that's why uh, you should make a good casserole. Forget about the tuna and forget about the noodles and cook some things that will really uh, help your guests have a good time. So my three suggestions for today are, are not simple, and, but they're not complex either. This one being the lamb and sausage and eggplant casserole. My sons go crazy over this. And then, of course, the duck and uh, sausage cassoulet. And finally, the Philippine pork and chicken adobo. And there it is, so that we can have a grand time celebrating the table with the frugal gourmet. Until I see you again, I bid you peace. Bye-bye. <laughs>